He's already got himself a Natty and a Heisman. So why not add a Lombardi to the collection? Might need to get the cigars ready, y'all. In Justin's second season, Joe Burrow has bolstered the Bengals to the big game and has a chance to bring home the franchise's first ever Super Bowl title. When he was drafted to the Bengals in 2019, he promised that things in Cincinnati were about to change. And that man was speaking nothing but facts. So what makes the sophomore signal caller so special? Let's hit the tape and find out. What separates the elite from the camp arms, the Tom Brady's from the Spurgeon wins, if you will, is their impeccable feel for reading a defense. Common collected throughout the chaos of a snap, an elite quarterback must be unflappable in the face of confusion, processing at light speed and finding the weakness in every defense that they come across. Let's jump back to week 14 to show this piece of brilliance against the Niners. Second drive of the game here, and the Niners are showing Burrow a double A-gap look, something they previously hit him with on the opening drive. To counter the potential gut rush, Burrow motions Mixon to the sniffer position, making sure the Bengals have six blockers and optimal angles if the blitz comes. Surveying the defense, Burrow knows there's only really two looks he's likely to see here. Either the Niners send the blitz and play cover one, or the backers bail, rolling the defense into a cover three. The backers do indeed bail, and Burrow knows the play is on. The near side has a nice concept designed to pick on the flat with two deep wheels, forcing the flat to carry the second in fear of giving up the long score, then attacking that vacant flat with the back swing, but the back is in to protect, so this side is ruled out. The far side is where Burrow knows he's got something. Uzama runs his crossing route across the face of Al Shair, forcing his attention his way, opening up the throwing window to Higgins on the post. Al Shair is a smart backer and knows Warner has Uzama picked up, so can cheat back to the window to cut off the post and maybe get himself a pick. As Burrow enters matrix mode, time slows down. He sees the poorest play from his line, leaving someone able to bat the pass, pump fakes, realizes what this has done to the defense, then immediately reloads through the middle window with a perfect strike to Higgins. Check it out from the end zone view where you can really see the Burrow brain. First he looks left, confirming the cover three drop, then upfield to Uzama, trying to pull 51 inside to open the throwing lane, then knows exactly how the defense will react to the pump fake, firing instantaneously to the next window. If you're late here firing into a second window, you're gonna get picked. Burrow is just processing so quickly he can make it happen. It's this level of pre to post snap reads followed by on the fly adjustments that really makes him special. Spagnolo's disguised defense posed little threat to Burrow in either of their games, with Burrow regularly slicing apart their disguise into cover two. In the first game, the Chiefs fake like they're in man, with the corners up in the receiver's face. But when Burrow spots it's in fact zone, he knows the corner and the smash concept will open up, finding Boyd for a good chunk. And in last Sunday's game, the Chiefs are giving no clue what defense they're in. But right before the snap, Matthew has to get depth on Chase, and this reveals the cover too. Burrow is quick to pick this up and puts the ball right on Higgins this time, not allowing the corner to drop from the flat and be able to make a play on it. Burrow also shows elite understanding of how zones can actually isolate defenders. Here, the Ravens are in cover four, but with Higgins' wide split and outside release, he's essentially matched up in man against Anthony Everett. Burrow knows this is a mismatch, firing the ball early to 85. Same spot of early isolation again here against the Niners. They appear to be in cover four pre-snap, but Jaquiski Tart will roll down and Jimmy Ward slide over to play the middle third in cover three. This leaves Ambry Thomas on an island and Chase cooks him with his sluggo. Knowing where to put the ball is only half the battle. Being able to put the ball exactly where you want is the most desired trait for a quarterback something Burrow can do down to the plank length. This pass to Uzama has absolutely no right to be completed, but the ball placement by Burrow is otherworldly, slinging right over the head of the trailing defender into the midst of his big tight end. 
His placement when going deep is already some of the best in the entire NFL. He knows he's got Higgins in one-on-one -on -one coverage here, rainbowing it up and over the corner to Higgins on the fade. This ball fade on the Titans playoff matchup is ridiculous. In third and short here, the Bengals are going to run a pick play for Tyler Boyd against Tennessee's obvious man defense. And watch how Burrow throws this with touch, high into the outside, so if the corner undercuts the pick, only his man can get it. And once more with the deep ball, this time to his favorite target, Jamar Chase. The Chiefs bring the heat and watch Burrow throw this with just his arm. He's got almost no space to step in or rotate that hip and yet still puts the ball exactly where he wants, high and back shoulder so only his boy Jamar can get it. A large slice of success needs to be carved and credited to the young superstar that is Jamar Chase. He's a damn beast. The best rookie receiving season we've ever seen since Randy Moss. Chase changes the whole identity of this Bengals offense. Defenses must commit multiple men to him or get burnt. And we didn't say risk either. If you lead this man one-on-one, -on -one, he's gonna torture you. Even with the mountains of film from this season already showing it's a bad idea, the Chiefs tried to get away with it. They give Charvarius Ward no help and even though this coverage is good, Chase bodies him at the catch point, meeting the ball at its apex to guarantee that it's his. Despite scorching them in the first, they still didn't learn their lesson. You can't leave him one-on-one -on -one in any situation, especially not the goal line. He'll just body you out of position and grab it for himself. And if you think you can just solo him with a cushion, then you're doubly wrong. This is just too easy for Jamar as he catches the smoke route and turns his man inside out with one cut, sprinting into open grass, only being cut down thanks to a great diving disruption by Amani Hooker. We've made a whole breakdown on this man's excellence that we'll link at the end of this video, but something we didn't talk about before was just how much of a beast he is after the catch. His go-to move after the catch is actually back towards his own goal line, squaring up the space before picking an angle of attack. It works to perfection here against the Chiefs as it opens up the inside angle where he turns on his boosters, running away from everybody for the score. Take off. You can really see it here on this wide receiver screen. Watch him take a hop back towards his own goal line to square up the space, juking and weaving through oncoming traffic, spinning his way for the first. And this is a nice design here by the Bengals to get the ball to their best playmaker. The Bengals are going to run a play-action flood, but take a leaf out of the Packers' book, having their star receiver be the checkdown route, allowing for big plays that aren't just 5 yards. Chase gets it fast when Burrow is immediately pressured, forcing two defenders to cut each other down with a bounce outside, and it's green grass for 20 more. When Burrow pulled off this ridiculous play extension in college, you knew he was special. But doing this against NFL level defenses is a different prospect. The line has been so dreadful for him. These scrambles have become basically a necessity. And honestly, Joe Burrow has delivered. Despite his right tackle starting his kick step in the previous quarter, Burrow is still going to face major pressure off the right side here as Armstead tears through his guard. Joe starts his rollout left, but then puts his foot in the turf, pulling a 180 to lose Armstead. He then widens his angle to get around Ebukam. When most QBs would just throw this away, Burrow knows Chase is down there one on one, telepathically telling him to break back right on the throw, and the unstoppable pairing notch yet another touchdown. He's not afraid to put his body on the line either. On this crucial third late in the Titans game, Burrow knows he's seeing man, and with the poor protection all game, knows he's not going to have time to find a receiver. So he smartly climbs the pocket, keeping his head up to freeze the robber defender before taking off, leaping like a salmon to ensure he gets it. And this play had all our jaws hitting the floor. Chris Jones has him dead to rights in the pocket. But as if by magic, Burrow untangles himself from Jones's grasp, sprints out left, and then manages to hurtle out of what looked like a sure wrap, scrambling out of bounds after he gets the first. The dude is special. Despite the offense's brilliance, there's a catch, and it's been a prominent problem throughout the postseason. The Bengals' offensive line is bad, real bad. 
Like, real, real bad. The right side is an imitation turnstile at best, and non-existent at worst, and the line as a whole struggles with muddled rushes. Part of this is down to Burrow missing some protections, but the majority is honestly down to the men tasked to protect him. This problem has been a worry going all the way back to when Burrow was first drafted, even causing him to end his rookie season early with a torn knee. This is the reason so many people were calling for the Bengals to draft Sewell, and it's not like you would go back on the chase pick, but a team who was picking 5th overall last draft is bound to have holes remaining. Unfortunately for Cincinnati, it lines up against their opponent's strength. Good luck. It's been a fairy tale ride for the Cincinnati Bengals, and now just 60 minutes stand between them and their first ever Super Bowl win. A feisty defense paired with the dynamic duo has brought them this far, but now they'll face the toughest test when they take on Sean McVay's Ram squad. Just one victory cigar left for Burrow to claim. Let's see if he's gonna light it up. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure to hit the subscribe button for future videos. If you want more football insight, why not check out our videos on the league's newest superstar receiver or the potential MVP of the season.